What's up everybody, how's it going? Today we're gonna to talk about Rome Built Sidesteps. Uh, Rome Built is a company based in Portland, Oregon and they make exterior accessories for the Sprinter van. The Sidesteps are a really critical piece of gear, I believe, for the Sprinter. If you have a 4x4 Sprinter or you're thinking about getting one, you should know that to get up into the Sprinter, whether it be the sliding door or the front doors, it's a full 24 inches from the ground to get up into the vehicle. So the Rome Built Sidestep, it splits that difference and it gives you a 12 inch step up onto the sidestep and then an additional 12 inch step up into the van. So that makes it a lot easier to get in and out. The sidesteps are also gonna protect the side of the van. If you come upon a rock or a branch, uh, it's gonna scrape the sidestep before it's gonna scrape your vehicle. So I really love the Rome Built stuff because it's super burly and the build quality is top notch. And I think Rome Built really captures the essence of the 4x4 sprinter life. So uh, if you're thinking about going off road or doing an overland trip or just generally being a 4x4 hooligan, the Rome Built sidesteps are a piece of equipment that are really gonna make you look like a badass. So if that's the look you're going for, then I would definitely take a look at Rome Built. And uh, today I'm gonna show you how to put on the sidesteps it's not a particularly simple job, and uh, I would recommend having a helper, but um, once you get going and get the hang of it, they go up pretty quick and they're super secure. So let's take a look and see how we put on the side steps. Alright, so if we take a look at the clearance on the 4x4 Sprinter, you can see it's pretty massive. Uh, this is a 2020 model and uh, about 18 and a half inches to the bottom of the pinch weld there. And then when you open the slider door um, and to get up into the step, you're looking at a full 24, 24 and a half inches. So uh, the side step is something you really need if you want to get in and out easily. So taking a look at the side steps here, they are aluminum and they're powder coated black. Uh, being aluminum, they're not actually that heavy. Um, here are the attachment points for the side step. On the passenger side, there will be four attachments. And this is going right up here. All right, so let's take a look at the tools that you're gonna need to do this job. First of all, you're gonna need jack stands, a jack or an extra pair of hands to help you hold the, the steps in place while you're getting them marked. You will need a rivet nut setting tool, which is an uh, M8 by 1.25 inches. And I'll talk more about that in a second because you have a couple different options there. You'll need a ratchet with a 13 millimeter socket, a power drill, an eighth inch metal drill bit, a 17 30 seconds metal drill bit, a Sharpie marker, center punch, a hammer, and some Loctite, and some corrosion inhibitor. Okay, in order to bolt the side steps into the frame of the vehicle using these bolts, you're going to have to put in some nut certs, which will allow you to uh, thread through the side step and into the frame of the vehicle, attaching it securely but also making it removable. So first, you'll need to get the nut certs uh, inserted into the, the frame of the vehicle. So you're going to drill out on the underbody and uh, you want to make a hole that's just slightly larger than this. If it's too large, the nut cert is not going to grab properly, so make sure you're using the correct size bit to make it just larger uh, than, th than this nut cert. You even want to have to pound it in uh, slightly. Um, that's going to be your best bet. Okay, so in order to get the nut cert in, uh, you've got the rivet nut setting tool. Um, and if you want to buy one of these, you can. Uh, this one is over $100, so I'll give you another option too. But um, generally for a good one, you're going to pay at least $75 to $100 for one of these. First thing you're going to do is find the correct size for the nut cert to thread onto. And then... it's tight and then you're going to put the nut cert on there um, expand this and stick it into the hole that you've made and simply just squeeze it and this part of 
the nut cert here will bulge and grab both sides of the piece of metal that you've just drilled a hole in. So once that's in, this will be set inside the frame and then uh, you'll be able to take the side steps and just bolt them in using this. One nice thing about a nut cert um, versus a nut and bolt is that these don't rattle loose due to vibration. Um, it's why rivets and things like this are used on airplanes because it's actually a more secure attachment than using a nut and bolt if you're in an environment that um, the, the frame is going to vibrate. Okay, so if you don't want to spend $125 to get one of these long-handled uh, rivet setting tools, then I got a pro tip for you. You can do the same job with a couple pieces of hardware that you can get from any hardware store, really. Um, and if you can see this, you've got your rivet nut here, and then there's a couple washers, and the key is that you want to get a nut that slides freely over the threads of the bolt that fits onto your rivet nut. So get that like a size larger, and thread all this together. Okay, and then what you do is you grab the free spinning nut with your wrench, attach a drill to the other side, and start tightening. And you can actually see how the rivet here has bulged, and that's what's going to grab either side of the metal that you're trying to put the nut cert in. So I'd actually recommend doing this a couple times uh, just like this before you actually set these pieces into the metal. It'll give you an idea of how many times you need to spin the drill in order to get this to bulge enough. So, you know, if I put this back on here, you can keep getting it to go tighter and tighter. You can see right there. So this is a cheap way to do the same job, and if you're only doing this one job, uh, I wouldn't recommend getting the more expensive tool when this works just fine. Killer. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is put the steps in place. And this is where the jacks come in, uh, the jack stand, or have somebody help you hold it in place. So uh, as long as the support brackets are tight up against the pinch weld, and everything looks at it as it does in the picture, that is going to be the proper fit. What you do want to do is, is, after you've supported it under the vehicle, go outside and look at how the step is placed with respect to the entry step for the driver's door and the slider door. You want to move it back and forth so it has the, the most amount of step in front of those two doors. And uh, once you get this up here, you'll see what I mean. You just want to make sure it's, it's, it looks the way you want it to uh, before you start to mark the holes. Once everything looks just perfect for you and the step is exactly where you want it, then make sure it's securely in place and you want to go ahead and mark the holes with a sharpie or a center punch. With the undercoating being uneven and usually bumpy, uh, it's a bit hard to do it with the sharpie, so I do prefer a center punch to mark the hole. Once the holes are marked, you want to go ahead and take the step and set it aside, and now you'll start to drill out the holes to set the rib nuts. Make sure to coat all of the exposed metal with your corrosion inhibitor, and then you can go ahead and pound in the rib nut. Once the rib nut is securely in place, you can use your tools to tighten the rib nut, and then back out the bolt. It is a good idea to check that the threads of the rib nut are still sound before you go ahead and attach your piece of equipment. Now that we have the rib nuts in place, we can go ahead and attach the side steps. 
Make sure that you're using some blue Loctite on the threads of each of the bolts so they don't rattle loose in the wilderness. Make sure that you use the washers behind each of the bolts and it's a good idea to leave all of these loose until you're ready to fully tighten the entire step. Okay, now it's time to attach the support brackets and each one of them is a little different. The passenger side step has two support brackets and the driver side step has one support bracket. So you want to hold them up, it will be obvious which one fits with each part of the side step. Once all of the rib nuts are in place for the braces, uh, of course you have corrosion inhibitor applied under each one of those, then we can go ahead and bolt on the support braces to the side steps. Once you're done with the passenger side, you can move on to the smaller driver side step. And that's pretty much it. These are the Rome built side steps for the 144 inch Sprinter. Perfect for a four wheel drive vehicle. They look awesome. They're super burly and it's the kind of equipment that makes you a total badass. If you like the Rome built side steps, you can find these and a bunch of other products on the Vanland website. I will put a link in the description and you can find them there. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. <laughs>